Hello, hello. Welcome to um, Thriving in Motherhood, 30 Days to Reconnect with the Love that Changes Everything. Uh, I am so thankful you're here. This has been on my heart for a long time, and I just felt that I should just do it in February. So um, I'm just doing it. So um, I hope it blesses you. And um, yeah, so um, first of all, I just want to pray as we get started um, that God would meet with us and he would say things that he wants to be said. So dear God, we just thank you for each of these women who are going to listen to this um, recording that are um you see how they work, how hard they work and the things that they do for their families. And I know that you, they are dear to you. And so we just pray that the things that are said would touch their heart, that you Holy Spirit would just touch them and touch what's in their heart and, and would just convey to them what you want them to know. And I pray that my words would be yours, that you would, that I would just say what is truthful in Jesus name. And um, so I just pray you protect us. I pray you just make the kids quiet so you, they can listen and just give them space so they can really work through this month, um, and explore, explore who you are. We love you, Jesus. Thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Okay. So, um, I'm gonna do a little housekeeping. We're just doing this Facebook group cause it's just easiest. I know that people don't tend to like it. I don't either. And then there will be new stuff each day. Um, I hope um, they, they, I think we're going to do a zoom call every week uh, where we can just hop on like this and you can answer, ask questions and um, be on live and um, most likely maybe Fridays, but, uh, and then we're going to do a daily reading. I'll read something um, that, well, the idea is just to tenderize your heart for who God is and what that means for you. Um, and also, I'd love to answer questions. I would love to be like, if you've ever wished that you could just sit and have a cup of coffee with someone who's been down the road, you know, of parenting, um, I'd, I'd love to be that. And so um, go ahead and post questions in the Facebook group and I will get to answering them uh, as I can. And um, yeah, so I just would love to hear your heart. I'd love to know what you'd like out of this. What are some things that you really want to know about? Um, I'm here for you. So I am Molly. I am the founder of the Fine Art of Home, um, the founder and formulator of Bloom Naturals, a natural skincare company. So I have been a mom for 25 years. We, my husband and I have been married 20, uh, 20 almost 28 years this month. Uh, and um, we have five sons. So three are in college still and, and two are out of college. Um, and so the things that I share are from my own experience, um, my trials and errors and the goodness of God, thankfully. Um, I spent much of my life striving for something, for meaning, for value, for, for not feeling like a total mess up. I really wanted to be a mo good mom and a good wife. I, I, I worked hard towards that, but I did it on my own power and it just left me exhausted, overwhelmed, and the results that were not what I was trying to achieve. I would say to my husband, I lost my smile, but actually I lost a sense of who I was. Each one of us comes to this place with our own story, our own experiences. Many of us have been exposed to some terrible things in our lives. We've been victims, experienced severe loss, real hardships. We've experienced rejection, loneliness, and a million other things. What we tend to do is blame God for everything. He's kind of like the catch-all for, for who's to blame. We, we want to blame someone. We say, why doesn't he stop all this hurt? Why did he let the painful those painful things happen to me? Where was he when I needed him? But really, it's broken people making bad choices, hurting other people. What I want to do in this month together is to look at the character of God discovering who he really is. Maybe you're here because you experienced wounds from people who claimed they were believers and you decided you wanted nothing, nothing to do with him. Maybe you grew up in a Christian world, but your life really, really wasn't that different. Life field, he field felt distant at best. Maybe you knew God when you became a mom, but the business and pressures of life crowded it all out. 
you don't have time for more things. Or you just go about life wondering if there's more. Maybe you feel like you've been a, you've made a mess of things and you have no idea how to change it, how to move forward. Whatever it is that brought you here, I'm so glad you're here. I fit into a few of those categories. I've been where you are. You know, even though I, when, when, you know, I grew up in a Christian home and, um, and yet to me, God, so God was this King on a throne with a scepter waiting for me to mess up. Jesus, I could get around. I liked him. He, he was pretty friendly, seemed friendly. He was more approachable and the Holy spirit, you know, he was, uh, he was, you know, definitely kind of mystical and all that, but he, um, but I could, I, I, I didn't have a problem with him. He wasn't, he wasn't somebody that I couldn't, didn't feel like I could come to, or, or I just didn't know him. Right. So, so, but God was this, was this being of judgment. And, and so what that did is that prevented me from growing and from, from, hearing what he has to say, because the lens I looked through was that he was a, a, cha- a tough God, that he was waiting for me to mess up, that that a relationship with God was going to be one more thing that I would mess up on. That's what I thought. And I remember being in the IF gathering years ago, and Jeannie Allen was talking about how we have to know God. We have to know who he is. Like that is one of the most important things in our lives. That is the most important thing because often it's the barrier to knowing him. It's like, for me, I had put up a wall to God and I really wasn't able, when I read the Bible, it was kind of bland. It was, it was a lot of words in some poetic and just, I didn't really know what it meant. And because I didn't have the framework and I didn't have the lens that he's a good God. I was in Arizona with my husband, we we're vacationing and he would go ride his bike in the morning and I would go for hikes in the, in the hills. Um, and he had left to go biking this day. And I sat out on our porch, we were having coffee on our porch and, um, I stayed uh, for a little bit and, and I just, um, I was, we were processing through this experience that I had with someone in my life who just, con- who, who, when I'm with them, they are always talking about themselves. They never ask what's going on with me. And as I'm sitting there looking out, um, I felt this sense of God saying, that's how you see me. And I paused and it was, it was, um, it wasn't a question. It was a statement. And I knew that there was truth to it. I, I knew that that was true, that, that I saw God as, as not ju- as judgment, but then also as someone who really isn't interested in me. Like he's way too big for, to deal with the likes of me, um, that, that I was not worthy enough to be in, in relationship with God that he had bigger fish to fry or, you know, bigger people to, you know, whatever. That was my philosophy. And, and so that kept me at a distance from him. And so that day he said those words and it actually really touched my heart. Like I didn't see it as judgment. I saw it as God saying, I'm about to show you something and you're going to love it. Like I knew he was going to say something to me. And I got on, I, I was walking to, to the, the, the trail, the uh, trailhead and, um, and I got a notification on my phone from a, a church that I follow. And, um, and it was a, it was a notification of a, of a podcast that they had just posted. And it was about who is God. I was like, I'm listening. And I listened to it as I walked to the trailhead and on part of my hike. And I just, that hike, I just was like, okay, Lord, it, it, like, okay. So Jesus is the exact representation of God. The Bible says it. I will show you verses of, uh, of that, that, sh- that say that, that Jesus is God. And he's always been, 
And so the guy that I liked, Jesus, was the same as God Almighty, right? Jesus was the same as God Almighty. And I had it wrong. I, and Jesus wasn't the nice guy. And, you know, the, the um, you know, good cop, bad cop, they were both this lo- these loving beings who wanted to be with Molly, who loved Molly, who loves you. And so I go on this hike and it just, I started when, when I knew that, and because God had spoken so clearly and had given me that, that podcast to listen to that those were not, those were not, those were intentionally, those were intentionally sent to me. And because God had an appointment with me and he wanted to show me something. And so from that day forward, I just started to read scripture looking at who God is, what is the heart of God? And it changed my life. It it changed the way I parented. It changed the way I viewed myself. It changed the way I engaged in my marriage. And so that is what has me excited for you in this month is that I'm excited for you to just know a little bit and then start to know a little more and realize that God is for you. He is not against you. And all the terrible things that happened to you and the the struggles you've had, and and maybe you've even cried out, like, God, show me you. Show me yourself. I want to know more. And it just felt silent. I did that too. I lived there. And so I'm going to walk through what kind of got me out of that. And a lot of it, this was one of the, the first things to tenderize my heart to who he is. This tenderizing of my heart led me on a journey. And God started exposing me to his goodness in scripture. He started to show me that who he was, he would show me in his word and, and what his character is like. And it changed me because I saw, I, because I saw him as someone who was in love with me, who wanted to partner with me. I know that's weird, but amazing. It, it's, he wanted to bless me. He wanted to impart things to tell me the secrets of his kingdom. Way back when I lived in my brokenness, I couldn't have understood that I was worthy enough. But when I started to see his kindness, it opened my heart to understand how much he loves me and how I, in his eyes, am worthy. You are worthy. You're worthy of all his love. He sent his son to die for me. He sent his son to die for you. His son took the weight of all of our sins, past, present, and future. And he put them on his shoulders, carried it all so that we never have to. When he showed me this kindness and his character, I began to believe. It became easier to believe that he loved me. And everyone who just says, I don't really know what all this means, but I want to know more. God is willing and excited about exposing us to his goodness, and he's passionate about loving you. So that's what this mentorship is about. It's about exposing you to the character of God so that it can just melt your heart, so that you can start to believe that you were made for something special, that God, when he formed you in your mother's womb before even the beginning of time, he had a beautiful life plan for you. And we get to, as daughters of God, we get to live that out. But the world is constantly bombarding us with negatives, challenging relationships. Sometimes the people closest to us are bombarding us with the idea that we're not enough. But God is saying to you, do you dare to silence that? Silence that noise and listen to me. And I'm telling you, Not only is it transformational for you, but it's transformational for all the people that you come in contact with. It's transformational for your marriage, for your children. I can tell you this because I've experienced that. Yes, I still make mistakes. I made a ton of them. But he is in the business of restoration. Yes, it's a process. It will always, I will always be in process. We will always be in process. But this month, we're going to refocus reconnect 
and start to learn about the things that will set us free. It's a joyful journey. I'm so glad you're here. So um, one of the, the, so this morning I was praying and I got this really simple verse, Colossians 1 27. It's at the end of it. It says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And I, I just was like, that's what I want to need to share with you today. Because when you take that little verse, which can so easily, I know I've read that and probably memorized as a kid, so many, you know, it's, I've encountered that verse so many times. And yet when you break it down, when your heart is able to see the goodness in it, it can change your life. So Christ in you, the hope of glory. So, you know, I kept God in a box. He was in a box and I would, why I would Come, I would bring him out when I needed it, when I was in, you know, when I really was at a moment and had a moment and, and was really struggling, then he would come out and he would be a helper. Right. But all the other times he was just in his box. I kept him there because I didn't know how to engage with in life with him. I didn't know that I could, you know, um, I hadn't been taught that you can hear from God or that God, you know, wants to, wants to tell you things and partner with you. But when you read Christ in you, the hope of glory, that means that Christ in you and every single one of you is the hope of good things to come of, of this world is falling apart every year. It just seems to get crazier and crazier. And yet Christ in you, God working in you just unleashes this goodness, this unleashes this God partnering, God wanting to partner with us, Jesus wanting to partner with us and saying, this world needs goodness and I want you to partner. And that's the hope that we have in this world is that you partnering with me will bring glory and hope to this world terrible world. Um, I remember hearing Jenny, Jenny Allen talk about her son. I heard, um, one of her sons is adopted. And she said, when he started to live with us, he had no reference point for love. He didn't know what a family was. He, he would run away from her in the store. He would, um, run away at their house. He would do all these things because he had, he didn't know what he was running away from. He didn't know what it's like to have a mom who just you're struggling and she just will comfort him or a dad that, you know, just gives you a big hug. And he didn't have a reference point for that. It wasn't in his wheelhouse. His wheelhouse was that there's no family. There's no parents because Um, He grew up in in an orphanage. And so she just said, that's the way we are with God, where we, we don't understand who he is. And so we don't know what we're missing. And so I'm on the other side. And I'm not saying that, like, I have it all together. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, I know God. I know Jesus. I have, I walk with them. They walk with me. And so I'm telling you that all my life, I didn't know what I was missing. I didn't know that God in me is the hope for my children, that God in me is the hope for my marriage, that God in me is the hope for my friends who are struggling or have loss or my family or all the things that God in us is is the hope of glory. And, and so I'm standing there saying, trust me, like spend this month here, do this with me. You know, at the end of the month, you, what you could have everything, you could be on the road to everything, or you could just be where you're at. And I don't know anyone that has it all together. I don't know anyone that doesn't need to grow. Maybe you're that anomaly. I don't know. 
but I'm, I'm just saying to you, I have tasted and seen that God is good. And I, I want you to know that same thing because it makes such a difference. It makes such a difference in the way that we interact with every relationships. It, it makes a difference when we look in the mirror. We have a different view. Tomorrow, I think I'm going to talk about looking in the mirror and what do you see? Because for me, I saw I saw a lot of not good stuff. I saw somebody who was going to constantly mess up. So I'm just telling you, you have no idea what you're missing, but it is so worth it. And again, just give me a month and just stick with it and keep listening and, you know, answer the questions or, or ask the questions um, in the, in the, in the thing. And um, in the Facebook group, ask questions. I will try to answer them and just go live and tell us a little bit about you tomorrow. I'll record something and then I will post it in the Facebook group. So May God bless you today as you listen, as you go about your day, just look for ways that he's showing himself to you, that he's guiding you because he's a loving God, that he's not the king with a scepter waiting for you to mess up. He's actually saying, you are a daughter whom I love, who I sent my son to death for you so that you do not have to carry your sin. It's, it's a ridiculous privilege. So anyways, that's um, a wrap up for today, for day one of um, Thriving in Motherhood, 30 Days to Reconnect with a Love that Changes Everything. So have a great day.